Uh, thank you so much. Thank the um, uh, public for um, being patient as we uh, got ready for today's meeting and a couple of technical challenges, but we're, we're all here uh, now. Um, we'll call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Good afternoon. Mr. Brennan? Present. Mr. Rickerman? Here. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Here. Mr. Vine? Here. Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? Here. I Thank believe you. that starts when um, I uh, call the order or even when Red McDowell gives the invocation. I'm convinced it actually starts when, when I hear the clerk say good afternoon. I'm not sure she has ever started the meeting without saying good afternoon or good evening. And, and <laughs> uh, Erica, your voice is special and, and you're special too. That always makes me feel good. I'm not sure why I decided to oh, say that. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, Red McDowell, would you give us a word, please? Would you please? Would you bow your heads with me? Creator and merciful God, the voices of protests are all around us. There is a sense of calmness that has enraptured our city. Our prayer, of course, is to pray that this calmness elongates itself. With the many voices that have resulted in damage, calamity, and particularly the anxiety of our residents as, as they have tried to maneuver through this situation. Lord, we ask today that as we meticulously weave ourselves through this crisis, not only the crisis of COVID-19, but also the crisis of human loss, damage, property of evil. Lord, we simply ask that as we gather today, that you might touch us individually. Touch us individually and yet collectively that we might do the things that are necessary for the city of ours. Our nation continues to turn topsy-turvy, violence everywhere. And we would simply ask that in the memory the legacy of George Floyd that you might embrace and encapsulate this family with your love. Let not a mess overrule the positive and the miracles that has already taken place, not only in this city, but some very small, but yet significant, the miracles that has taken place in the lives of residents. We ask it and claim it in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend McDowell. And thank Reverend McDowell and Councilman Devine. Well, some of you may have also been uh, on the call yesterday, but, but, but not uh, visible. Uh, we had a wonderful um, day of the morning in the men um, preparing to, to spend some time as a, as a city uh, joining another uh, a league of cities uh, in the just giving America some time to mourn uh, the 100,000 loss to the coronavirus and uh, the disease it causes. And it seems like everything's been coming so fast and people have been hurting in isolation and people have been losing uh, jobs and losing um, opportunities to, to, uh, to prosper. And we've not yet taken the time uh, just to cry, just to cry, to mourn and, and, and lament. And uh, yesterday we had a wonderful 
uh, convening um, of, of the of Abrahamic religions. Uh, uh, and Rabbi Epstein and Reverend uh, Wright from Shannon Baptist and um, Reverend uh, Nolan Boykin from Historic Wesley United Methodist and also Imam uh, Omar Shaheed. And it was, it was, a, it was a wonderful um, uh, opportunity just to pray. And, it, and this was all planned before, obviously, the events of the last week or so, uh, the uh, protests and, um, and the subsequent um, even violent outbreaks we had across the country in the wake of George Floyd's death. And it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was, a, it was an opportunity to, to just, to just weep, just, just to have a chance to, uh, to mourn uh, as we there's so many families across this state, the city, and, and, and even uh, this country and world have not had a chance to even um, uh, be able to be there with their loved ones as they've taken the last breaths. And uh, it was, again, edifying. And we did it together as, as a community. So thank you all. Thank you, uh, Red McDowell, for um, yeah. sharing some, uh, on, on, on the program and to make it just be in there physically. So um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm city manager. Yes, sir, Mayor. Council, at this time, we would ask for you to approve the minutes from March 17th, 2020, March 20th, 2020, and March 26th, 2020. Moved. moved and seconded. Second. All right, second. Any discussion? Move the previous question of Clerk Colorado. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir, Mr. Duvall. I don't see a step in here for the adoption of the agenda, and I would like to make an amendment to the agenda. Is this the appropriate time? Would you like to have a motion to adopt to a new Please, please uh, both. And then more than the one, one motion as we can, Howard. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, I, I make a motion. We adopt the agenda for the day with the following amendments. I would like to add for the discussion the appointment of the uh, Midlands Housing. Tamika, uh, uh, what's the name of your group? The Affordable Housing Task Force. The Affordable, Affordable Housing, Housing Task, Force. Task Force. And I would like to discuss the reappointment of an airport commissioner whose term has uh, expired and needs to be reappointed. Okay. Um, have we had the, um, okay. Uh, I wasn't expecting that one, but, but absolutely. Well, well, we'll do both. And I guess I'd ask, uh, in addition to the second part, have we done the traditional... Oh, it's been a little disconnected from that. Uh, applications, have we done applications for the slide or just a, a point for a, a, an opportunity to reappoint a sitting commissioner? We, we had done an application process previously and it was on our agenda previously. We, okay. we didn't get okay. to it, but we have an, a person that, that can fill that by reappointment who okay. uh, has- so this, be, this, is this is a reappointment. This is That's a reappointment. Can we, can we have staff check that? I thought we did reappoint that, Howard. Um, I've been but, trying to get it checked. Who is it? <laughs> Carol Fowler. Uh, was we need to have a discussion about that. Okay. All right. We, we can discuss. But that's 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 actually how I call for. We'll, so we'll, we'll, we'll make the agenda uh, and approve it and uh, amend and approve uh, adopt the agenda rather. Um, that's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Any further discussion? We'll take those up uh, uh, when city manager says appropriate. Uh, move the previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. Mayor Benjamin uh, and Council, hmm? uh, at this time, our first city council discussion. Um, I don't think there'll necessarily be any action items regarding the COVID-19 update that we have continued to maintain on our agenda. Um, Mayor, I don't know if you have any uh, updates in particular that you'd like to share. I know there's lots of activities that we've continued to push out for the business task force, and we certainly want to discuss some testing 
options um, that a branch of, of uh, the Resilient Columbia effort um, that we've been working on with staff and some external partners. And we have Kay Hampton, our Deputy Director in Economic Development here with us today to talk about that specifically. Um, the only thing I would add, Mayor, is just we continue. I've sent you all a comprehensive email about city facilities and um, just our operations have continued the way they were. Um, we've always been open and working, just working differently, remotely, uh, staggered. Um, we have not opened Washington Square, which would probably be the next public facing facility as far as conducting business in our city um, until it's fully assessed. We continue to work on that. And, and implement some protective measures for the public and for staff. So if you have any specific questions about any of that, just you know, feel free to ask me, but just so the public's clear on that, continue to do your business online um, for the immediate future. No, no, very, very helpful, Teresa. No, I think uh, obviously we're still seeing um, um, significant testing across the state. We're seeing some great coordination between different agencies. Of course, as you have um, more uh, testing, you're gonna have more positive cases. Uh, well, I was doing a whole lot of the coordinating of, of the various testing uh, agencies and facilities and businesses myself and um, Teresa and, and Pam were uh, kind enough to, to give me the, the, the spreadsheet queen uh, and, mm -hmm. and Kay Hanks. Uh, who's taken that over and been working with uh, so many different disparate agencies and, and, and pulling some things together. You know, my, my goal, not being selfish, but yes, being selfish, was just to make sure that as much testing, um, as much of a leveraging of contact tracing, as much as available from these disparate, disparate sources were being focused on the communities of greatest need in, 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 in Columbia, uh, in the four corners of our city, understanding we're part of the region, but really wanting to focus on the needs in the city and I've been very pleased uh, with the coordination with, uh, with, with DHEC and PRISMA, uh, with um, um, NUSC, with several of our private sector partners. And it's, um, uh, it's, going, it's going really well. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let Kay do a deep dive into we'll how we go forward. But, you know, it's amazing to see our regular communication change, moves things in the right direction. Obviously, DHEC had already articulated the obvious priority areas based on zip code or based on, on age or, or even socioeconomic status. But there are some places they were not yet looking and we directed them to those places and put them in the housing authority and some other places. And, 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 and they, they um, work with some others that we may have put on the, tape, on the table and pull folks together. And it, it's amazing. Things uh, just keep, kept moving and we've gotten a really, really high rate of negative cases. Uh, and that, that's that's been that's been very encouraging, very encouraging, uh, particularly with some of the most vulnerable communities, and uh, including some of our senior housing facilities. Um, sometimes um, no no positives at all. You know that, that's 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 a given guy. I mean, it, it just is. And uh, based on what we've seen in other states, so so you don't you don't want to you want don't ever want the overall cloud of the of the of the of the pandemic that is is cast over the entire community to ever not allow you to see those silver linings. We got to make sure we identify those and, and that we, 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 we celebrate those. So, um, Kay, maybe, maybe go ahead and tell folks about some of the uh, upcoming testing opportunities. Anything else you want to talk about? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. If I can, I'll just share my screen. And can everyone see my screen? Oh, Not yet. No? There it goes. OK. Um, so I've been working very closely with the mayor and um, our chief of staff and the director of emergency operations and um, we prepared a testing strategy for the city of Columbia, um, focusing obviously on our high risk population. Um, and that would include our senior housing facilities, prisons and jails, group homes, and then targeted high risk areas. Um, currently DHEC is doing the testing for all of our senior housing. And like the mayor mentioned, um, we're seeing um, positive um, results, meaning negative cases in those areas. Um, as I go through this presentation, you'll see where um, MUSC is a potential partner um, with some other stuff. Um, so I've got them listed as a potential partner for some of our other targeted high risk areas. Additionally, um, we went out and we put a message out to our um, 
businesses with high personal contact and hospitality industry. Um, and it, it happened um, right before things started reopening that Kroger Health um, set up a mobile site at the fairground. So we provided information to our business community, small business community about that opportunity. Um, and they were able to take advantage of that as they were going back to work and be able to be tested and be sure that they were able to open up safely if they chose to do so. Um, and then the third part of our strategy, since we are a city and we have many um, people coming into our city is to make sure our corporate business um, has information on opportunities that are available. Um, and MUSC is a potential partner for, for those companies and they can be contracted for nine hours of testing um, and if the business is located in a high risk area, this can potentially be done for no cost. If there's no questions on this slide, I'll move to the next one. Okay. okay. So we've had, um, so we've got three major sites going on right now. Kroger Health um, was at the fairgrounds. They just finished up their testing on May 30th. Um, they administered just shy of 2000 tests over seven days. And they're now working to add an additional six days of testing at that location um, and more information to come on that. At the same time, um, Walmart on Garner Ferry opened a site um, last Friday and they will have testing available every Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. with the ability to scale if necessary. And then upcoming on June 19th and 20th, um, DHEC and Prisma Health will be located at Benedict College for testing um, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the site will be to the left of the stadium with an entrance from two notch and exit on Pinehurst. Our most recent development with testing um, is a potential partnership with MUSC. MUSC does its partnership, um, its testing in partnership with Doctors Care. They provide their own logistical setup, but traffic support would be needed. They need one week's notice to set up a mobile site they use the nasopharyngeal swab testing, which is a, has a five to 15% more sensitivity than the nasal swab that is commonly used to test, test for COVID-19. Starting in June, um, MUSC has the capability to do antibody testing at no cost to the city for high risk areas. Um, and the antibody testing that they provide has a 99.4% sensitivity and 95% specificity. Um, testing can be provided at sites determined by Columbia City Council and city staff. Um, MUSC has the capability to provide fast pass for hospitality and high personal contact employees at any mobile site or dedicated hours can be provided for those industries if it is deemed necessary. MUSC also has the capability to provide a no ID requirement for testing sites as long as an organization provides an email for them to provide re results. Any larger business who wishes, wishes to have testing provided to their employees can contract with MUSC and receive the nine hours of testing or larger businesses can utilize the city's locations and high risk areas to have employees tested at no cost. Our next steps um, will be for us to determine where we would like our sites to be located. I recommend using a cityhealthdashboard.com. If you guys get a moment to take a, a look at that and use the following criteria obesity, income inequalities, diabetes, high blood pressure, and similar criteria. Most of the city, if not all, will qualify as high risk using these criteria. If council chooses to test in an area that is not high risk, for example, a business test district, but like I said before, most of those business districts qualify in one of those areas, testing can be contracted with MUSC for a nine hour testing day. We'll also need to determine a testing schedule and it's recommended that we do a staggered schedule and be prepared so that testing continues through the winter and the fall. And that's, I'm open for questions. Okay. Thank, thank you. Any questions for Kay? Yeah, I just uh, I heard you talk about the, the, the testing method and the swabs. Um, is it going to be the swab testing like at the fairgrounds where the person does it themselves or is there going to be somebody who actually administers the swab? Um, there'll be someone that would administer it, um, but MUSC is also working on a different type of testing where they can administer it themselves. 
Okay. Okay. I was just, I have a concern, especially when you go to certain areas, if someone's going to be asked to do it themselves, there was a MUS, someone from MUSC was saying that those tests people don't always get as deep as they need. And so they may come back negative, but it's because they didn't test correctly. So I was just concerned about that if we're going to take it out into the community. Yes. Uh, Okay. So the MUSC rep recommends that we use the, the nasopharyngeal swab, which is the one that you're talking about, rather than the um, swab testing, the nasal swab. Okay. How are we, Kay, I've got a question. This is um, Will. How are we uh, communicating to small business owners, hospitality uh, establishment owners, the, this outlet for, sure. for employees to use? So what we did um, is we went, went through our business associations as well as our own um, economic development contacts and um, we use social media. Um, additionally, you know, as we move into this, um, we're gonna need the help of everybody and obviously our, our uh, public, City of Columbia PR department does a wonderful job and they, they push out this information as well. Um, and it's on our Resilient Columbia um, website um, as, a link to DHEX page that shows where all the mobile testing sites are. Um, but we, we're gonna need to work with, I recommend um, you know, working with, with our churches, working with our business associations, Rotary, um, any nonprofit organizations, as, as many organizations as possible that we can push that, the information out to, that they can push it out to their contact list so that everyone knows. And, and one last question for you, Kay. Thank you for this wonderful research. Have you gotten uh, from these various testing sites, testing groups, what what the return for results period looks like? Um, is it is it getting uh, uh, shorter and shorter, or, or what? It is. Most of them um, have results within forty eight to seventy two hours. Some of them are, are faster. Great. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sir, Mr. McDowell, I can't see anyone, so y'all, 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 y'all got to speak up when you can. Okay, let me ask you. You said um, say a word, an additional word about high risk areas. Sure. So um, the city health dashboard um, was actually recommended um, by Bloom on a Bloomberg call with with the mayor and. That dashboard gives you a lot of information about your demographics. Um, so I the, I guess, like high risk criteria for COVID-19 is obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, but also income inequalities fall into that as well um, um, because they may not have health, adequate um, health care to be able to, to take advantage of this. And so these mobile sites, if you don't have insurance, it's free. Um, if you do have insurance, they're gonna use your insurance information. Okay, how, how extensive is the uh, dashboard itself? It's pretty interesting. It has a lot of information on it. Um, I can... It's very well done, Ed. It's very well done. It, get, it, get, it does a deep dive staff um, using a bunch of different sources has put some really good content on there. Okay. It might, it might be It might be worth, um, Teresa, getting some, some, you know, someone uh, maybe on the phone with Ed just walking, walking through it, but it's very well done. Thank yeah, you. I'd like to see that too, if, um, if you set something up. Um, Kay, can I follow up on something you just said? Um, so it's free if they don't have insurance. If they do have insurance, the sh insurance is, is um, they file a claim with insurance? Yes, that's how most of the sites are operating. Okay, so I think we need to make sure if that's the case, it needs to be clear. I know someone, not, not through us, they went to go get a test. Um, they did their insurance. Apparently they haven't gotten their deductible yet. And so they got like a bill for like $300 and they were shocked. So this wasn't through us or anything, but if we're going to be, people are going to be testing and it's putting out there through us, we need to make sure it's clear on the way um, things build. And then I guess we need to find out if, if insurance doesn't cover it all, or if they haven't met their deductible, if they're going to get a bill, we need to make that clear so that people aren't shocked. Okay. What? All right. Any other questions for Kay? Kay's been, been doing an amazing job. And again, it's really just taking a whole bunch of really um, quality, disparate efforts 
or that Khadijs will be going in different directions. And I think in some communities are going in so many different directions and um, having someone like Kay help and just kind of coordinate them. For, so for us, it, it helps cover the, the four districts of the city, the communities that need it the most, but 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 everyone. And I'm, um, I'm just really encouraged by this work. Uh, can we um, figure out what maybe what some inter introductory comments to this document. Teresa, could we have um, Cal and Michelle share with the delegation as well? Uh, just make sure that our legislative delegation, they're gonna make, they're gonna make decisions, particularly at the State House over the next month, uh, month or so about how to dispense uh, the $1.9 billion or so. And I wanna make sure that they're fully aware of kind of the work we're doing here in the city, okay? Yes, sir. We, we sure will. And just a few other, um, just logistical things I'll mention you regarding testing and executive session. But thank you, Kay, so much for your thank hard you. work. And Harry and Pam and Ryan and all of y'all know that have kind of been working on this kind of subgroup for Resilient Columbia. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, with all, all good stuff. Y'all been grinding, so keep it up. Thank you. Okay, Mayor, um, unless, uh, are there any other COVID-19 related updates you wanted to give Mayor Benjamin? Or, no, or not right now. This, is a, this also acknowledges that we have some, that some of the testing sites, particularly the Prisma, um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the testing site with Benedict, that we're, we're working to add some other um, uh, components to it, some celebrity components to it that might also encourage a lot of younger people uh, to get tested, uh, which is um, a major, major challenge we have there. So. We, we, this has been, that's, it's, it's an ongoing process. So we'll, we'll see how those uh, announcements go. All right. Okay, sounds good. Well, moving into another important topic as we are approaching our um, budget workshop, our fiscal year 2020-2021 uh, proposed budget for the upcoming fiscal year, a first reading today, a public hearing and first reading today, Mayor Benjamin and Council. Just to recap for you, a couple of highlights of this um, challenging budget. Miss Missy Kaufman, our budget and program management director will take you through a few slides. Well, I don't know if you're gonna do slides now or at the public hearing, Missy, I'm sorry, I guess now. Maybe on mute. You may, you may be on mute, Missy. There we go. You got me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Are you good. doing the slides now? And then for the public hearing, is there any additional information? Is it, we're, we're kind of rolling right through, so I just wanted to be clear. The right, I'm not doing the I'm not doing the public hearing slides right now. I just have a few to just talking through about what. Um, okay. Just to to mention that we had the public hearing um, presentation um, here in a little while um, as as we present that to to city council. We also have a budget revision motion um, based on what was discussed at our previous budget workshop. For the additional allocation or the and the reduction in the transfer from hospitality tax general funds um, to make a motion to revise that the budget was advertised with a transfer of 2.7 million and so during the last conversation with the council on the budget we had revised that to be a, a an additional 1.2 million dollar reduction in the transfer um, so that one, that 1.2 could retain be in the hospitality tax fund, um, and so since the budget was advertised that way, we need to make a motion to revise it. So the public hearing that you the public hearing materials that you will see this afternoon um, reflect the budget as advertised, but we do reference the fact that the additional revisions um, that would be noted um, should City Council decide to accept that the the motion okay. and just wanted to see if there's any conversations or questions around around no. that uh no so probably i mean uh, i plan to spend some time um this past weekend talking to howard and to Tamika. um as i've been promised i just haven't had time to talk about 
between now and when we make our final decisions, I'm prepared to make the motion uh, today to reduce the transfer uh, for 1.235 million to sort of stays in the hospitality fund, and we can meet the needs of um of our all of our uh, partner organizations, but still want us to, to, to dig a little deeper. There had a couple of ideas um, that we'll we'll get one more shot at, but um, appreciate the work y'all really appreciate the work y'all done so far. At what level? Uh, the the thoughts that I have, uh, Daniel. Yeah, I just was curious because yeah. I know we had we had talked about cuts and some of them are a little deeper than we all, you know, no. had discussed and wanted to talk. I just wondering, you know, with, with I mean, you, what that sure. would entail. I, I just had a couple more notes about, um, and literally, it was really just trying to cobble together different um, uh, amounts of funds, um, identified funding here and there, and, and I'll, I'll share them in a more comprehensive manner. I promise to do that with, with all of you, uh, maybe in one document. Um, and it wouldn't be a lot more. I mean, I think we're, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars more. Um, I'm sure it would, it, it would be much more than that. And we got to continue to make sure we fund you know, all operations. But I think as, as much as we can do, and obviously I know we've had extensive conversations with our um, our, our organizations and other organizations we, we support. Obviously, everyone's affected uh, uh, significantly by the um, uh, pandemic. Uh, but even if we all come out of this and, and, and evolve, there there are obviously events this year. Though planned um, and didn't need to be funded, uh, there are events that were the first quarter starting to the second quarter that a lot of the and or move to, to the um, third and fourth quarter. But just making sure we're really just thinking out loud ways in which we can kind of right size this um, uh, to where we're doing as much as we can what we have for maintaining um, regular city operations. So, but it, it was uh, it was it was six figure, Daniel, not 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 seven. All right. But I'll but I'll, I'll follow with all of you with uh, exactly what I've been what I've been thinking. Just having, cool. having a moment to breathe. Mm -hmm. um, I doubt many of us have. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So if there are you no know, other questions about the public hearing, um, just got um, items. The only other item of note that we wanted to point out is that we do have some remaining budget items for discussion. Not proposing discussions today unless City Council wants to take them up today, but just. Um, just a reminder of some decisions still for consideration. Um, as discussed last time, um, what we have included in the budget for county services and homeless services. Um, we also have a contract. Uh, the other items we're pointing out are those things that we have contracts with. Um, and just want to point out um, what we may want to do with those items for going forward. So, and that would include fast forward. Um, for the general fund specifically. In relation to the hospitality tax, as just mentioned, there's just whether and how the allocations with regards to committee or line item. Um, we do fund River Alliance and Historic Columbia and One Columbia. Um, they are contractual items. Um, if you have any questions about those, um, we're prepared to discuss, as well as accommodations tax, um, the general purpose 5% funds. We currently fund together, we can read in One Columbia. Um, Portion of the other portion of the one Columbia contract from those five percent funds. It will, and Michelle, we'll say we have we will have an opportunity, obviously, to discuss uh, some of our nuts and bolts and, and uh, agreements, disagreements. Uh, I, I I do feel very strongly about the different hospitality associations. I know I, I don't have unanimous agreement amongst all of you, um, but I do very feel very strong that citizen and partnership should be treated the same as the other organizations and and uh, and, and not see deep cuts. Has been have been proposed, and obviously uh, want to see some type of room as we all seek to bounce back. Uh, some room also for uh, North Columbia Business Association uh, to uh, uh, to uh, also help their member organizations uh, um, move back into the economy. So, one way to uh, I, I wasn't trying to start a debate right now. Uh, see, I see mistake. You, you can say something, Mr. Davis. Certainly, I wasn't trying to start a debate, but uh, that was. That was top of mind, so I wanted to make sure I shared that. I was just, I, I was just going to say I, I, um, I agree with you, and uh, I hope that we can recall. Um, I think last year's 
uh, conversations about how do we try to bring about some parity um, amongst the um, different business associations. And uh, the Howell and I had uh, really endorsed the concept of looking at some sort of a tier and how we structure them. Um, so I think this might be, we may, may not be able to do it in, in its entirety this time, but I think moving forward, that is that is the way to go. Um, so that uh, some, um, they all t are trying to do the same things. And it's just a question of having the necessary resources and, and also work with them as they go to look for um, resources beyond what the city might be able to give them. You agree with that, Howard? Yes. Uh, uh, I have shared with the mayor a proposal that I have been working on, and it's about a 25% cut from last year's allocation. Uh, and it does include uh, North, uh, the North Denoma organization. Uh, but I think we need to hold this conversation until we can have a more thorough conversation yeah. about the HDAT rather than debate it today. Yeah. I, I think we can take care of most of our main organizations and the ones that will be able to operate under the next 12 months of restrictions based on the um, virus. All right. Yeah. Again, I, I wasn't trying to start a conversation, but I, wanted, I did want to make sure that was clear. So um, uh, thank you. Uh, keep going, Missy. That's, that's all that we wanted to bring up for this portion of the workshop today, Mayor. Um, again, staff is prepared to assist City Council with any information you might need in making these decisions or having these conversations um, and ready for that time. Again, we weren't anticipating that we were discussing today, but ready if that was desired. But what time is the public meeting? I'm sorry, good, Daniel, then Ed. What, raise my hand. What time is the public meeting? Oh, I'm sorry, that was Howard. Sorry. It's it's a it's part. It was noticed to be part of this meeting. Six. Mr. Duvall. No, sir. It's it's part. Yeah, of two, okay. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. Um, uh, and would you say, Mr. Dow? Yes, uh, Missy. Could you go back to that first slide where you go back to the numbers chart? This one. Yes, sir. Okay. Water sewage. Okay. All right. I thought I, yeah, I got the right figure. Thank you, ma'am. I got it. Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, All right. Mr. Mayor, Missy, I'm sorry, are you done? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Missy. Mr. Mayor, Absolutely. I was, I'm attempting to send you a chat notification, but Chief Jenkins, those are working a building fire at Epworth Children's Home. Oh, oh. Heavy fire and smoke, but I'm awaiting confirmation that all the staff and children have been vacated. Please, uh, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, prayers. Um, okay. Yeah, please. Keep, keep us posted throughout the meeting. Um, Missy, again, thank you, you and the, your whole team, um, Theresa, as I prepared for the uh, testimony before Congress and Conference Committee, which seems like it was two months ago, it was just on Friday, um, but just making sure I was prepared with uh, uh, good information, good solid information, able to articulate not just the macro needs for cities across the country, but specifically what it meant to Columbia. So good, good data, good information. Uh, yep. I appreciate all the work y'all did. Thank you for sharing our issues here in Columbia, always being included in a national uh, discussion. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, we will take up the consent agenda, um, making sure we have we don't have any additional items or um, deferrals, do we, Erica? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Consent agenda items four through twenty-eight. Move approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Um, aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. 
Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank you. Item 29 through 31 are a few additional zoning planning matters for second reading. Item 29 is the zoning map amendment for 2.57 acres, Southwest Rugby Road and 4802 Brickyard Road. Teresa, um, if y'all if if don't mind, just one second before we go into the agenda. I know we talked about a day of mourning on the map. We talked about obviously the ongoing pandemic and we referenced the, um, the, the protests regarding George Floyd and everything else. But I, I, I feel like a, 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 you know, as you're living something, uh, you, you, you're, you're, I think you kind of realize how much we're not talking and dialoguing. I did want to at least make sure we spend some time really acknowledging what not just the, the American family and the global family, but what this uh, city in particular went through, has gone through the last week or so. How many folks were um, um, were, uh, were deeply hurt um, by the events of, of Saturday in particular, uh, and how many people found Saturday as a manifestation of expressing their deep hurt uh, of, of, of years of, of systemic issues. And, and I, I just want to take a point to say on behalf, and I've talked to all of you uh, in one way or another, how, how thankful we are for the people of Columbia, how thankful we are for incredibly um, Brazilian business community that has been making their way through this incredible um, uh, pandemic and, and trying to get the legs back up under them. And, and some particularly down in the vista spent um, about an hour this morning with, with Bill Dukes and Blue Marlin and his, and his staff and talking to all of his employees who were really frank and candid about the experience they had this past weekend, but not only this weekend, but also just over the course of their lives, a life experience. And um, Spent some time, obviously, yesterday and throughout the weekend with the protesters, the vast majority of whom were out there for all the right reasons, um, speaking to the humanity and the inhumanity we saw in Minneapolis last week. And uh, and this was a, we had a moment last weekend, last week where even in my advanced uh, age, um, I saw so many different people of different persuasions, many of whom rarely agree on anything. Everyone agreeing, you know, people from the far left and people from the far right, everyone in between. But just, just, just watching a watching a life snuffed out before your eyes just broke so many hearts and had people talking in a way in which we hadn't seen before. And then to watch a, a, a smaller group of people take that 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 level of peaceful protest and, and turn into something it was never supposed to be. Um, uh, was was painful because because it, it 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 took away from a conversation that we were all needing to have and still need to have about mm -hmm. ways in which we can make this country better. And then, and some folks watching might not might not might like like this, and I, it really doesn't bother me at all to see the strength and the restraint on Saturday of our of our police officers. Um, obviously the. Uh, I don't know everyone who's out there. I know we had the city police department, the sheriff's department, we had state, state patrol and so many other uh, entities, probation parole, everyone out there unified. And um, and you had a number of protesters who legitimately felt that that their humanity had, had been recognized maybe for a significant period of time and, and they were emoting in ways that obviously um, depending on what they were doing, was acceptable or completely unacceptable. And then you had men and women in uniform who were, who were often derided almost as if they're robots and, and they don't suffer from the same hurt and pain and, 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 and suffering that we, that, that we all do and we love our family members. And, um, and, and, th and there was this, this, this constant yelling over each other or the silence and then it manifested into something much larger than in, in something like I'd ever seen, uh, uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, in this city and like many of you, I wept. I wept and I can't think of any other way to say it and it, it hurt, it hurt deeply. And I, and I just want to take a moment to say um, thanks to Skip Holbrook, thanks to Chief Holbrook and Maron Kelly and his team, Sheriff Lodd, um, uh, thanks to our, our public work staff 
<laughs> who uh, well, Chris and I and Henry and, and Teresa was out there picking up trash in front of Dutchess Square. How they got out there quickly, abated the graffiti, um, uh, uh, work with the private sector, move the cars, replace glass, and 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 in a in a, in a almost um, perfect setting, uh, raise the city flag, the state flag, and the American flag back right where they belong, and 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 what was meant to be a very clear statement on, on the resilience of, of our city. We've been a whole lot, you know, we've been through a lot together, and and to see the reaction of our city and our leaders. It's not just the seven of us. We have leaders of all shapes and sizes. Um, um, our incredible staff led by Teresa, but, but, but men and women who, who, just, who just stepped up, just stepped up. And, 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 and I wanna make sure that as we go forward, that we rewind and go back to that, that painful point we all shared last week, that painful moment and that we continue to commit ourselves to uh, to to a to true dialogue, uh, a, a real dialogue about those things we can continue to work on and improve and do better. We try to do better all the time, but now, unlike 30 years ago, when everybody got the same news from the same three um, uh, new network news anchors or, or, or local news from Susan Audie Fisher, what have you. Now we all get our news from so many different sources and no one's talking about white people who, who, have, who have thoughts and ideas and pains and stories and how do we move that forward. Um, the, we, we, we began last week on one journey. Some folks try to take us off that journey on Saturday. And I think we got to get ourselves right back on the path to, 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 to recognize in true human dignity in, in a way that, that in which we're actually listening to each other. And, I, and so that was a long way of just saying thank you uh, to, um, to, uh, to you all. Um, talk to every single one of you. you. know, Daniel came out there later. I know Tamika and Jamie were riding the streets and, 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 and giving ongoing uh, surveillance. But every, all, every, everyone fully involved in, in, in every single thing that was happening. So Howard, thank you. Sam, thank you. Will, Ed, um, Daniel, and Tamika, uh, Teresa, obviously, and Skip, and, and, and Aubrey, and Harry, and uh, the sheriff is not only here, but um, the entire uh, staff. Our response, which has not been universally heralded, um, but 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 has generally been been been, if not appreciated, respected. By 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 uh, uh, the people that we represent, we sworn to represent every single day, is I think indicative of a very special place, and we got to make sure that as we move forward these next several um, uh, days and weeks and, and months, that we kind of really remember that we're in a, in a very special place where we are the kind of constant architects of this of, of the building this more perfect union. We got we we can't worry about. Minneapolis and Oakland and New York and Louisville and everywhere else, but right here, this corner of the world that God's put us in this position to, 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 to manage for this period of time, we got to do something with it. We've got to do something with it. We can't miss this moment. And, and, I, and I apologize. I know we got, we got a lot of work to do, uh, but, and I know we're going to talk some, a little bit more later about, about some things, but as we're going through the, 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 the imaginations of, of, our, of our agenda, so I, I just need I just need to say thank you mm -hmm. to y'all. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Rev. Mr. Mayor, just just a word of not only thanks because you thanked us, but it was because of your leadership, mm -hmm. because of Ms. Wilson's leadership, and every member of the staff that made and we were sitting texting and trying to comprehend this event, it was you all who stood on the front lines. And for that, you're welcome for thanking us. <laughs> because of your leadership, you allowed us to look beyond ourselves. And of course, do the necessary things. It's almost 
it's almost like we've turned a mess into a potential miracle. It could have been far more devastating. Our chief was Johnny on the spot. All of those persons who assisted Johnny on the spot. So it's because of this collaborative movement that allow, allowed us to see some hope, some possibilities. The question that I've been asking myself, how do you turn a mess into a miracle? Mm -hmm. How do you allow, how can we allow those businesses that was disrupted return to a sense of quasi-normacy. Quasi I'm determined and I'm convinced and I will work and I'm sure my colleagues will do the same. It's a mess, but miracles comes out of messes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so thank you, thank y'all, and um, thank you, Teresa. You get, get back to do your job, okay? <laughs> uh, that was that felt like it needed to be said too, because you know, we do. Um, I don't know. I'm not quite there yet either, and we're just moving along, conducting business because we have to. Um, but you're very right to acknowledge that a lot of us don't have time to uh, process things as we're in the midst of it. Um, so thank you for that. Um, Pam, did you have a quick update from off from Chief Jenkins out at Edwards? Yes, ma'am, I did. I spoke with Chief Jenkins and he let me know that the um, building was a storage facility that they had on Edwards campus that mostly contained um, linen and, and different types of, um, of supplies that they had. Um, it's on the opposite side of campus, so there were no children near the, the property and there were no no um, people in the building. There were people in the building, but they left the building once the fire um, was in there. So no one is injured and there are no, no um, as he knows right now, there are no, no injuries or deaths right now. So just want to let you know that it was a storage facility, not near the children, and um, they're still trying to get their fire under control. Thank you, Thank you. Pam. Thank goodness. Certainly. Certainly. Okay. So these three zoning matters, item 29 is the 2.57 acres, Southwest Rugby Road and 4802 Brickyard Road in um, Richland County. All right. The um, second read. Is there a motion? Mr. Davis? I, I move to approve uh, item 29, uh, uh, 30 also, is that right? And 31, uh, please. And 31. 30, if and 31, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, and then maybe one or two points of discussion mm -hmm. later. Yes, sir. These three items are related. So, yes, sir, Mr. Right. Davis. Is there a mm -hmm. second? Second. Good, uh, some discussion, Mr. Davis? Um, just that, um, you know, we, we, um, I think we followed, uh, uh, Councilman McDowell also sort of participated in some of the dialogue we got in uh, item 29. Um, and I think it's, it's typical of, of, uh, where we know we need to go as far as, uh, decent affordable housing. And, and um, there's always a dialogue prior to, but the effort to get input from the uh, existing neighborhoods. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable that uh, the due diligence on, on behalf of the, um, um, the, the body that wants to um, provide the housing, I think they've done as best as they can do. Uh, they've uh, taking the necessary steps and uh, and provided input that that was educational in a couple of the meetings I sat in on and I've I've um, <clears throat> had the opportunity to also dialogue with 
people in the surrounding areas, um, straightforward conversations. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is uh, this project uh, not only is it consistent with our goals, but it, it meets it and it has it meets an immediate need in that particular area. And so um, I was just um, surprised that um, uh, there was a, I guess, sort of a turnaround on on, on the vote on yesterday. Awesome. So, and I'm sure the, the others are the same, but but this is uh, this is point blank spot on when it comes to uh, the goals that we have on the tables right now to to meet the needs in this housing need. The um, all right. Any other discussion? Move the previous question, Mr. Davis, uh, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vaughn? Not voting. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, I'm, I'm sorry. Can, can I just make a statement up? I, I want to make sh make it clear because um, I know we do sign something to say the reason I'm not voting um, is not because Mr. Bishop is a member of, of school board, which I think somebody said it is because um, the church has been a client of mine in the past and maybe in the future. So it is a legal conflict for me to vote on that. Yeah. Damn. Understood. Thanks. Thanks, Ms. Devine. Mayor Benjamin, at this time, we would ask that um, we open a budget public hearing um, for the fiscal year 2020-21 budget, as we um, just discussed. And of course, the first read of the budget ordinance number 2020-050 to raise revenue and adopt the budget for the city of Columbia, South Carolina for the fiscal year 2020-2021. Uh, there's also a related related ordinance for first reading, um, Mayor. It is item 33, ordinance number 2020-046, amending the 1998 Code of Ordinances of the City of Columbia, South Carolina, Chapter 23, Utilities and Engineering, Article 7, Stormwater Management, Section 23-205, Stormwater Service Charge Rates. Um, being that we are not having any rate increases this year proposed um, proposed for the for the new budget um, we needed to make that adjustment for the stormwater service charge rate okay thank you thank you um, Madam city manager um, so how many different uh, platforms were you utilizing the data to, to um, have uh, public participation I'll let our clerk explain yes sir we are using publicinput.com the call-in number was posted along with the agenda actually included in the header of the agenda and at this time we have one caller on the line who's waiting in the speaker queue i have not received any emails related to the budget thank you so much thank you so much um we'd love to hear from that caller now and that, that okay caller Please, uh, and I, I believe it's uh, Mr. Raj Lurie. Okay, hey Raj. Mm -hmm. Hey, Doctor Doctor Lurie. Raj, are you on yet? Not quite, sir. One moment. Oh. All right. Uh, my name is Raj Lurie, and Mayor and the Council members. It's good to be with you all. Uh, you all doing a great job with what's happening in our city, in our country, in our world. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the Columbia International Festival. Thank you for all of your support in all past years. This event is more relevant today than ever in the past. With all the things that are happening in, in our country, in our city, in our state, <clears throat> Columbia is a very diverse community. Of representing nearly 
200 nationality and cultural groups. I think probably about seven to ten percent of our city population is born outside the country and live in our city right now. <clears throat> and Columbia International Festival had 24 years of success. This past April, we were to have our 25th big anniversary celebration. But we all know what happened. The COVID-19 postponed the event. We have not canceled it. We hope to do something in a smaller scale in the fall. One of my requests to you is that please carry forward the budget you have approved for the fiscal year 2020 unspent money to be carried forward to the 2021. We're going to have something in the fall to celebrate the 25th anniversary. And also, please uh, give us at least $50,000 for the, this current year. I know we're all going the financial constraints and I understand, but this event is so important for our community to bring us together so diverse, but become one Columbia, as mayor says. So we really need your support to bring our community together. This event brings more people together from diverse backgrounds than anything else. I know my time may be up, but uh, thank you so much for your support. And I can I count on your continued support for this event. Thank you all for all the great day, Brown Day. Thank you, Dr. Lurie. Thank you so much. I could say more if I have more time, but I'm just out of maybe I have a two minute limit. Is that right? <laughs> That you you have no more time, Raj. I'm just messing with you. Uh, Raj, please give uh, that, that, that. If you um, have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. No, Raj, please give your fantastic young daughter her regards to you. I'm not sure if she's still in, in, in New York, but very proud of her. Um, uh, no, 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 no questions. But um, um, we're we're going to take do everything that we can, obviously, to um, uh, to take advantage of carry forwards. Um, and, and obviously the opportunity to, to, to potentially use funds that were appropriate this year uh, for next year's events. I think, it's, I think we're, gonna be, we're gonna be incredibly hard pressed, if not impossible, to see increases uh, in anyone's budget. We're, we're, we're all, we're looking at some really significant and deep across the board um, cuts, but, but, I, but I understand the request and, and, and believe me, um, having participated in your events so, um, over many years, they are fantastic. And yes, uh, representative of, of uh, of what it means to live in a, in a strong and diverse city. So, so, so thank you. Um, um, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be talking soon, brother. All right. All right. That's, um, uh, and anyone else, um, Madam Clerk? No, sir. There are no other callers on the line. All right. Super. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other, uh, uh, email communications or what have you? I need to be ready for the record. No, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, do we have an additional presentation from Missy right now? or? Yes, sir. This is the actual budget public hearing slide. Let's do it. No, okay. Right, great. Thank you. Good afternoon again, everyone. Hello. Um, today we are presenting the Fiscal year 2020-2021 proposed budget. The proposed budget that is before you today um, represents a total budget of $337 million for our operating budget, which includes our general fund, water and sewer fund, stormwater fund, parking fund, hospitality and accommodations tax. These make up the city's operation, operational budget. And Missy, that's down how much over last year? I don't have my last year's uh, numbers in front of me. So that is down um, right at $32 million from last year. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. 32.5. Thank you. The budget was developed um, with a focus on continuing continu of operations, continuing of provide excellent day-to-day -day services and fulfilling our city's financial obligations, making sure that our debt service payments and other financial commitments are preserved um, in this proposed budget. As we've talked many times over the past few weeks, there are impacts we have on our budget with relations to COVID-19, in particular the revenues that we anticipate um, that we use to develop our budget with. Um, 
primarily those revenues that we expect to be impacted are those that are um, uh, most likely coming from economic drivers or consumer spending. This would be in our general funds, include our business license, our user fees, um, the transfer from the hospitality tax, um, and then also to we had mentioned the fact that our um, loss collections, we also um, foresee those being decreased as sales tax uh, revenues come in. Of course, we are not aware or know how long these impacts will take place, so we will continue to monitor as we go throughout our budget year. Um, we have mentioned several times we anticipate amending the budget um, again in the fall as we, as we monitor the collection. Parking funds, we of course expect some um, impacts on our street meters, our event parking, and then parking garage revenues, and then our special revenue, hospitality and accommodations tax, both our state and local accommodations tax collections. We'll start with the discussions regarding the general fund. Um, again, the general fund budget as advertised is $138.3 million. This is a reduction of about $24.6 million from the current year budget, amended budget. Um, it's about $4 million reduction from prior year actuals. Um, the budget is in balance as required by state law. We have not proposed any millage or rate increases. The budget was built using um, FY1819 actuals as our base with some adjustments um, for various um, areas that we know of to be um, a, that would have been increased in the current current fiscal year um, going forward. Um, business license permits, local option sales tax. Um, as we mentioned, no rate rate millage rates or fee increases, but with the local option sales tax. Um, impacts, we anticipate that those credits that property tax owners will see will be reduced and that may um, translate to most folks as a property tax increase um, when in, in fact it is the reduction in the credit that they would receive from the, the sales tax generation. As far as the general fund impacts of expenditures, um, of course as revenues go down, so will our, 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 our ability to spend. Um, so the department's budgets were developed, focusing, preserving personnel and maintaining service levels as, as they are. We've not proposed any additional uh, positions, no increases in personnel or increases in service delivery or enhanced programs. Um, our goal, of course, is to maintain existing service levels, but understanding that some of our programs and services will be impacted um, just by nature of the need to continue social distancing practices and other um, limitations. Uh, for instance, we know our summer, summer programs will be impacted for our parks, our swimming pools, um, so we anticipate some service levels like that to be impacted just by that type of activity. Um, the department's budgets were built using current year staffing levels, um, which means that they have what's remaining for their operating costs. Um, um, of course, that's also mean they are absorbing any increases to salaries that would have occurred since this past fiscal year, as well as any other um, um, great increases in our, our merit, I mean, our um, retirement increases that went into effect this year. Fortunately, the state has not proposed an increase in the next fiscal year, so we, we're not having to absorb those um, with our budget. And, uh, and all that means that departments will have, um, will have a very tight budget in which to operate with using supplies and services. Of course, we've also suspended our capital replacement program, um, which would be our, our fleet replacement for the general fund. Um, we have not proposed any um, issuance of a lease this coming fiscal year. Of course, that would be one of our expectations as we amend the budget um, for next time um, in anticipation if we do have additional revenues or find ways for additional um, revenue streams or better, better projections than what we have made. Um, our capital lease program would be one of our um, first items to come back. And of course, we're not making any um, projections for our capital improvements, which would be our city facilities, mm -hmm. our, our public buildings, our parks, our police fire stations, playgrounds, and so forth. 
At this time, the budget does represent our best case scenario. Um, that means that there could be additional impacts um, that we um, are hoping we will not have to make additional reductions to the budget. Um, a lot of that will depend on as we see some of the reliance on our budget that come from our, our transfers, again, from hospitality tax. We also do have a transfer from, from our parking fund, so we will need to continue to monitor those as we go forward. We don't have a lot of information about what department's budgets are including this coming fiscal year at this time because departments are still going to be revising their budgets to meet the budget um, allocations that are being presented to you today. We have provided City Council with a list of various items that we're suspending um, in order to help manage our, our funding levels, anticipated funding levels going forward. Missy, this Next is Will. Can I ask one question real quick? And I apologize, Absolutely. I should have, should have asked you this. Yeah. On slide seven, the previous slide you went through, uh, the general fund, um, the department, uh, general government, just a quick summary of what departments uh, fall into that category. Yes, sir. That would include our general administration and includes our HR, our public relations, includes our finance department, our IT department, and includes our support services. It includes um, mayor and the council. mayor and council's budget. Um, it includes the legal department. Great. Thanks so much. Absolutely. All right. So next we have our water and sewer fund, um, or our enterprise funds, which would include our, of our business type activities, our water and sewer fund, our stormwater fund, and our parking fund. We'll start with the water and sewer fund, which is proposed at 168.6 million. Water and sewer is a proposed decrease of 2.2 million from the amended budget. That amendment again is from the um, the, the decrease is the fact that the amendment that we did for this fiscal year was for the additional transfer to the general fund for COVID-19. Um, so we used fund balance for that purpose. Um, we have not reflected that um, use of fund balance in the proposed budget. So it, um, it, net, it nets out to be a decrease. Overall, water and sewer sales total 157 million and additional revenue sources, other revenue sources from, from water and sewer um, activities is 11 million. And as, again, as previously mentioned, there is no rate increase proposed. On our water and sewer expenditures, the total budget again of 168 million is a balanced budget. Our departments um, represent 101 million of the total budget, which is about 60% of our budget. Our water and sewer fund departments include our utilities department, our engineering department, public works, um, some general services, um, and some other um, activities, um, which would also include um, expenses for um, that are non-capital repairs to our, 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 our water and sewer system um, that would not be included in the capital improvement program. So a lot of that budget is not just personnel, it's also the construction activities that are not capitalized. As we've um, staff has shown and demonstrated here recently, we are utilizing a lot more technology to deliver our services and we'll continue to do so and move in those efforts as we um, continue in this coming year. Um, the AMI project is proceeding as scheduled. We will also have more online opportunities to interact with our customers, including chat type of opportunities and some additional ways that our customers can interact um, of a self-serve type nature. Um, and then of course, providing more information to our customers to be able to make their own decisions and information about their, their water and sewer services. Debt um, includes 40, uh, 41, 40, basically $42 million, which represents about 25% of the budget. It does reflect um, the um, prior year debt, um, debt service payments, as well as the issuance of uh, future debt um, in this coming year. The operating budget also reflects the cash or the system um, revenues used for our transfer to the capital improvement program, which is this year is proposed at 14 million or 8% of the total budget. And again, includes the transfer to the general fund, which is 6.8 million, 6.1 million, 2 million of that 6.1 is for continued COVID-19 response efforts.
Moving on to our capital improvement program and our capital improvement fund, the total CIP for the proposed year is uh, $40 million, which is a decrease of 80 million from 80 million. Um, that budget is broken down as to 15 million for water improvements and 25 million for wastewater. Our capital improvement program is funded uh, in part with cash and also some bond proceeds. We're using approximately 14 million as previously noted from our system, which is about almost 30% of our of, our, of the funding stream for our CIP is cash and another 26 million um, in bond proceeds. Um, even though the reduction in the CIP is proposed, we are still meeting our EPA deliverables. And we, of course, maintaining our um, financial metrics, which are very important for our water and sewer system in, uh, in order to um, continue the financial integrity of our system. This is a little more look at our water improvements. Um, our water CIP is 15 million. It's broken out. Um, by categories of our water plant improvements, um, our water quality projects, utility relocation, system expansion, and then other. Um, of course, we have several noted projects there um, for your um, information. On the wastewater improvement side, of course, this would be the larger bulk of our system CIP, um, which is 25 million. We're most focusing on rehab, 35% uh, capacity, um, and, which would be system expansions for 19% and then utility relocation at 12. Other would be a various, various activities of our continued um, city program management for the uh, consent decree and then other projects. Moving on to our stormwater fund, the proposed budget is 14 million for FY 2021. Um, there's very little change in the Proposed budget from the current year, most of which is just not reflection in the use of, of uh, fund balance at this time. Again, no rate increase proposed. That's on your agenda today for approval is the uh, stormwater um, ordinance deferring the five year rate increase um, that would have taken effect in this year, proposing that it be uh, delayed for one year uh, in response to impacts of COVID 19 on our customers. Department's budgets for the stormwater fund make up 50%, 56% of this fund. Um, as you may recall from going through prior uh, stormwater programs, a number of our stormwater activities are performed by city staff and city crews, which includes maintenance of our systems as well as construction, um, other construction and maintenance efforts. Uh, we do transfer from our CIP to our uh, stormwater capital improvement fund of 1 million or 7.5% of the budget. The, um, Stormwater fund also includes a transfer and indirect cost allocation to the general fund, 560,000, which is about 4% of the budget. And then debt service is 2.4 million. Um, this is the current debt schedule. This does not anticipate any new debt being issued in this coming fiscal year. Stormwater improvement fund is a $20 million plan for this coming fiscal year. Again, it is funded with a combination of of 1 million from cash and then 19 million from bond proceeds, existing bonds. Moving on to our parking fund, the parking fund budget is a total of 7.7 .7 million. It's a decrease of 3% um, from the current fiscal year. Again, as mentioned, the revenues we anticipate being impacted from our, in our parking fund um, as a result of COVID-19, it does not reflect any rate or fee increases. At this point, this budget does assume returning to normal operations um, for this coming fiscal year. And so a lot is dependent upon being resuming um, all of our normal parking operations and, and enforcement efforts. As far as parking fund expenditures, the total budget is 7.7 .7 million. Um, department budgets at this point represent 4.1 million, um, 50 53% of the total budget. Just like our general fund, our parking fund will be made up of a reflection of current year staffing um, with adjustments for operations to be able to um, stay within the allocation proposed for FY 2021. The budget does include 2.7 million in debt service payments, which is about 35% of the total budget. That is existing debt, not new debt. 
Missy. Yes, sir. Can you can you go back for just a moment? I think it was stormwater allocations. Um, slide back if you would. Yes, sir. Doing that now. All right. Back. No, come. Come back to you. Yeah. No, not that slide. The next one. The one above. The, the, one before the cap that. On yeah. 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 Improvement zone. Um. There's two two items there that I want to just ask for clarification, and one of course is the Belvedere, yeah, the stabilization project there in Belvedere, in the AB in the Allen Benedict. I can't hardly see this. Oh, I, the Allen Benedict, the Allen Benedict. Um, for three hundred seventy-five thousand, and of course, yes, the sir, yeah. I'm sorry. Do you, have, do you have a specific question, or are you just asking for information about those? I'm just asking taxes? information about those. Yeah, if you would. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, Clint is going to answer questions about that, um, and maybe to be able to describe the project. Hey, uh, Councilman, um, good to be with you. Uh, Alan Benedict Bio Retention Pond is a project that we've got slated to move forward in the coming year for, for CIP, um, and that would be design services starting with that and then followed by um, construction when we're ready. So um, that is a project that we've identified and um, we believe will help improve water quality as well as, um, you know, provide some runoff reduction benefits as well. Clint, Clint, now that's after demolition? Yes, sir, that, that is. That'll be a bioretention. Um, so it's low impact development. It's part of the um, the, the redevelopment of <clears throat> of that area. Okay. All right. All right. What and about? That, I'm sorry. That is ahead. also. I'm sorry, Councilman. That that's also we're we're trying to do that. That project is a public private partnership as well. That's so we'll be we get a lot of community involvement there. That's correct. What about the what about the Belvedere uh, stream? So, so yes, sir, um, Belvedere is one that we've continued to work on um, and we've got the, um, the cost estimates in place and we know what it's going to take to do it. And, um, and so that's a project that we're um, continuing to work with the county on and to potentially split the cost um, of that that's, one. That's correct. Okay. Now that's, that's, in, now is that the ditch that is included? And partnership yes, sir. okay, all right. That is the the, the stream bank restoration um, for 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 the the damage that occurred, you know, uh, during October 2015 flooding and and some just over time the damages that have happened there. Okay, thank you. That's what I needed. Yes, thank sir. you, sir. sir. Thank you, Missy. Yes, sir. Missy, this is Will. I, could you go to slide 17 real quick while we're on stormwater? Sure. Slide 17. Uh, there at the bottom, you have, and I didn't notice uh, this in the other expenditure models, you have a reserve uh, figure figured into this. Uh, if, if, the, if the reserves aren't met, do they carry forward and do all the other, um, I guess, pools of budgets, do they have reserves built in? So our water and sewer and our stormwater funds do have um, those reserves built in by um, nature of our bonding, yes, those funds would roll forward, they become part of the fund balance. The general fund also includes, we have a reserve on our fund balance. It's not a budgeted reserve per se, um, but it is it is reserved out of our fund balance on our book. And do that, would you say in the past, let's take a snapshot of three years, have those reserves um, gone forward because they haven't been um, drained in, in the current year? Um, we have not ended those funds in a deficit, if that's what you're saying. If that's another way to sort of answer the question you're asking. That's another way to answer those, Yeah. Right. So those Perfect, funds would be rolled into, those roll, funds would be rolled into the fund balance of the system. They're not accounted for as a year by year. They rolled up collectively as a fund balance. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Last, we have our um, 
special revenue, uh, which would include our hospitality tax fund and our accommodations tax fund. First being the hospitality tax, which is 7 million. It is a reduction of 4.1 million over the current year budget, um, almost 37% reduction. Of course, there's revenues coming in from hospitality tax. We anticipate being impacted on hospitality, um, impact on the hospitality industry due to COVID-19. Um, because the hospitality tax does have debt issued on it, debt service is a priority for funding. Um, it must be funded from us uh, and paid for. So our debt service is reflected at $3 million. That is current debt. There is no issuance of new debt out of the hospitality tax as was initially intended for the um, Finley Park rehabilitation, which that project is now on hold um, but, uh, due to the, um, um, of course, the, the projected decrease in the budget. Of course, any um, as we end this fiscal year, should there be any savings, um, either from revenue collections or from um, forfeited allocations, those funds would be um, carried forward and available, made uh, part of the budget amendment we look at in the, in the coming year. And of course, as we monitor collections um, and make any anticipations, we will continue to monitor um, this fund as well as others as previously mentioned. We know that, that, um, how's, Missy, how's that playing out so far? I mean, I'm even thinking about Dr. O'Leary's uh, request earlier um, uh, that not happening this year, uh, obviously happening next year. Do we see some, do we see some opportunity there to to uh, leverage some of um, FY uh, uh, 1920 uh, funding into meeting some of the, our traditional organizational needs for 20? 2021. So normally, normally by this time we would have, you know, of course we would have had collections for a couple more months. We would only have June collections, but um, so we, you know, we've we've allowed for collections to be delayed um, for the past two months, so we 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 don't have those revenue collections to really make a, a determination. Um, as far as requests for carry forward from organizations, those were due this past Saturday. Um, so we have not finalized what has come in in terms of um, groups that have requested their funds to be carried forward and to know which funds have been, and in this case, forfeited. So I guess the short answer is it's a little early to be able to give you those kind of estimates, um, but we were, our, our goal is to give you that information as soon as it becomes available. So um, obviously we have to meet that service um, under our, our, our bond requirements. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to make a motion uh, uh, for council support to increase the all allocation uh, amounts uh, to close to 2.6 uh, million. Uh, okay. And we'll see. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So the budget is, as it's advertised, is a $1.3 million but as, as suggested or as, as provided as a motion, will be provided um, in, the, in the proposed revisions as they are currently, um, we would recommend that we were able to make an additional reduction in transfer to the general fund, which would make available 2.5 million on the, um, for allocation. This means that the transfer to the general fund instead of being 2.7 million would be 1,540,000. The, the chart that is included on this slide reflects the allocations of what we have currently proposed budget revisions. Next, our accommodations tax. This is um, the accommodations tax that is um, for our um, state accommodations tax. This proposed budget is 1.4 million. It's a reduction of 1.2 or 46% course, we are anticipating the accommodations tax to be um, pretty significantly impacted um, on hotel occupancy rates due to COVID-19. Um, but occupancy rate, rates that the hotels are able to charge for those hotel rooms um, would have a, obviously an impact on the revenues collected. State law is pretty um, explicit about the allocation of accommodations tax. City Council relies on the um, 
accommodations tax committee. Typically, there are two groups that are funded out of accommodations tax. Um, we have not made suggestions or recommendations about where or how those funds would be allocated uh, other than council's normal um, breakout of 85% to the experience Columbia and 15% to Lake Murray. We've not made any any forecast of those and at this time uh, to give it for input from the council. The only remaining amount um, is the 5% general purpose funds, um, which is um, based on the proposed budget is 72,000. That is a reduction, um, of course, from the current year, um, fairly significant amount of um, from 2.7, I mean, from a uh, $147,000 um, reduction. So that's more than half of the allocation. We have used those funds in the past to fund um, primarily together we can read um, uh, one half of the one Columbia contract as well as some other um, community promotion type um, allocations that city council has made. Um, the transfer of the general fund is is stated for in the state law as twenty five thousand. I, I will say, I mean, obviously, all, everything you just said is, is very important, including the organizations that um, may not be funded. I'm, I'm particularly concerned, and I know we obviously we have as much latitude as possible between H tax and A tax and the like. That deeper cut to one Columbia greatly concerns me. I mean, the role that it's grown into playing as a, as a, as a rolling convening organization of the entire city, uh, the arts infrastructure, cultural infrastructure of the city, we, 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 we need them now more than ever. So we, we, we do want to spend some time between now and second reading, revisiting that as well. So I wanted to put that on the record as well. Kind of put a, put a, put a push pin in that one too. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. So that concludes the presentation portion of the budget public hearing. Um, Mr. Mayor. You have your order. Uh, uh, thank, thank, thank you, Missy. Yes, yeah, sir, Mr. Duval. Mr. Mayor, thank you, uh, Missy, for your, your presentation. Uh, and we have all talked about this is going to have to be a fluid year of adopting the budget today to meet the state law requirements. But in future months, we will adjust the budget. There's one figure that we won't have that opportunity to adjust, and I think if, it's probably if, if, if you can. I'm sorry, how if, if you're not talking, if you, if you guys, there's a lot of background noise. I'm gonna do the same, but with Howard talk. Is that it? Okay. Uh, there's one figure in this budget that I think is probably the most important figure that we have to consider in the next few months. And that's our allocation of the local option sales tax. I believe it's in October that we have to tell the county the amount of money from the sales tax that we expect to get to give the tax credits to the people from the city of Columbia who pay property taxes on their tax bills this year. Uh, I think probably almost 100% of the people of the city that pay property taxes don't understand that 30% of that tax bill that they would normally get is paid by a local option sales tax. And if we guess, if we set that figure too low, then they're gonna have a tremendous tax increase uh, when they get their bills next uh, in November and December and start paying them. If we set that figure too high and we don't collect that, then the city is going to eat that loss. So I think we need to give very serious consideration to what amount we're going to tell Richmond County to use as the city's contribution of the sale, local option sales tax to calculate the taxes this year. That's the only figure that I can think of in this budget that uh, is going to be inflexible in, in a very sh short time. Uh, we can make adjustments in just about everything except what we tell the county on a local option sales tax. That's extremely important. Thank you, um, Teresa. You make sure um, both Jeff 
and Missy, and of course Jan as well. Let's 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 do a deep dive there. It's very important. Yes, especially, sir. Especially these tenuous financial times. Thank you, Howard. Jeff, have you been in any discussions yet with Richland County in that regard? I know he's been doing a lot of discussions with some of his counterparts and other um, cities and how they. Uh, yes, we've. <clears throat> I've talked to some of the other communities uh, th that the concern that Councilman Duvall shares is a concern of all of us and across the state that actually had the local option sales tax as an offset that we do not have any numbers right now. And he did mention it would be October. It'll be the end of August, first week of September. So when we start getting our collections uh, in July, <clears throat> we'll be spending probably those next six weeks trying to crunch and come up with the best way to make the estimates. Um, I don't know that the county is going to be able to delay that timeline because they've got to prepare the tax bills. So unless they're going to delay tax bills going out in October, they're probably still going to want it from us within early September. <clears throat> as we go through the summer, we'll talk with them about that as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, any other comments? I, I, if not, I have a, a, a motion uh, uh, for um, Ms. Coffin's uh, presentation, um, a move of uh, approval um, along with a uh, motion to revise the FY 2020-21 proposed budget to decrease the transfer from the hospitality tax. $130,000 for a new allocation of $1,540,000. That is a motion. Is there a second? You're all muted. Please. Second the motion. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Ed, for being there in spirit. Your lips are moving, but you're muted. Moved uh, mm -hmm. and seconded. Uh, any further mm -hmm. discussion? Mr. Mayor, is that is that in slide number twenty three? Uh, the figures you just pr proposed yeah, is that is. that is yeah, in twenty three, yeah. right, sir? Exactly. All right. Exactly. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Brennan and Mr. Um, Rickenden. What What's the intention of that money? That going to the committee? That going to what? Um, like, uh, overall, I think we're going to have to figure out, um, obviously, maybe in our subsequent conversations we mentioned earlier, how we um, break that down between line item organizations, existing organizations, um, given Missy and, and, and Jeff uh, and, and staff latitude to figure out how this fiscal year affects the next fiscal year is going to require a lot of flexibility. So, so the answer is, is yes, you know, kind of all, all the above. I, I, I assume those are some line item organizations. Um, um, I, I think we need to have a committee, pro a committee process. I think that committee process needs to be even a deeper dive and more informed than it ever has been as we, as we look at how we closed out this fiscal year. And um, I, I just, I, I, this, this shift obviously is a significant amount from the um, uh, transfer uh, into H tax of uh, uh, 1.235 million um, uh, in addition to what was already set for in the original proposed budget. Um, so I, I'd say that's a work in progress, Dan. Um, but let, let's at least make sure that as we work through the, this delta, this, this different challenge together, we actually do it together. So I, I think I think it, it's it, it's 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 yet to be determined, and I think it's going to be organization by organization. I think it's going to be um, season by season. You know, um, who some folks are more focused on um, on, the, on events in the fall, or events in the spring, and we're gonna have to really do some deep dive on on uh, what's essential, what's not. You know, um, so uh, hopefully we can we can get a heightened level of, of communication and collaboration that might help us uh, get to something that helps us get through this uh, while 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 we get to hopefully what 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 might look like a greater sense of normalcy next year. Can we between now and second reading get? Um, how that the how that's going to affect the budget as planned by the city manager 
Because I mean, it's not a small amount of money. Oh uh, no! Oh yeah, absolutely. I think I think they've adjusted accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've already adjusted accordingly. What I what I think we do need to have a deeper dive in uh, some of the issues that you all have referenced, some that I've referenced um, about our larger hospitality organizations that you know, all not created equal from the beginning. Uh, hopefully, all will seek the same types of equity and parity that that, that Sam talks about um, uh, so often. You know, some of different balance sheets and others, everybody's impacted by, 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 the, by the crisis. This, I'm not trying to throw this into the mix, but if, 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 if some receive some degree of, of, of PPP, we need to know that and, and figure out how that, how that falls into the discussion and, and, and uh, of, uh, of all the organizations to some critical organizations, critical meaning that they really add value to the things that we do, um, $10,000 much more important than hundred thousand dollars over here to a well-funded organization. So it's going to require much more of a deep dive, uh, that, um, we're going to have to, we're going to have to kind of figure are our you, way through. Are you proposing that we, we block out time prior at our next meeting? I mean, when, when do you, when do I you think we, to I'm open to doing that. And I don't know, um, Teresa, if this, if this is one of the, one of the times we call on, on John Whitehead and the committee. Uh, does John still chair the committee? Uh, no, the, Terry Davis. Terry, I'm sorry, Terry. Uh, John, believe me, John's in, John's in, in John's the mix. John's an ex officio. He, he, is, he, is in, he is in the shadows always. Um, but leaning on John's experience, and Terry's been a long time member as well. So leaning on them and, and, the, and the committee to some degree, and our staff has got so much going on right now. So we can, if we can lean on them in some way that then allows us to come and complement that. Um, I've raised the issues that were on my on my mind, and as I know you all uh, have several as as, as well. Um, let's let's uh, let's just make sure we, we 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 do a deep dive, and, and then at least as much as we know now, and as Miss said, some things will evolve. We we need to, we need to kind of have the ability the ability to be agile, and as more data becomes available, we can we can adjust accordingly. But I'm fine doing it, Daniel. I, I, it's probably more fruitful. If possible, everybody's got so much going on right now. To maybe uh, ask our, our, our uh, I think God for our committee, <laughs> as, as, as that committee that to, to see if, if they could, might be able to help us kind of weed through some of the challenges as, as, as well. Yes, sir, Mr. Duval, and, and obviously many of you who want, who might want to be in the mix um, as well too. Yes, sir, Mr. Duval. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, this, this is such a special year with with so many twists and turns. I think this is a a year that the council needs to step up and and uh, handle this ourselves. Uh, yeah. We don't we, have enough money to we've had every, we've give had it everything. To we have every, everything except for the killer hornets and Godzilla right now. So it, it, it is a special year. Uh, <laughs> don't jinx us. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Mr. This, this Duval, you, I mean, Mr. Davis, you're still on mute. But I agree, Howard. I agree. Okay. Mr. Davis, you're still on mute, Sam. I know you sound like you look like you're waxing poetic too, but you're still on you're still on mute. <laughs> Easy. Well, what I'm saying is, I I, I think as we um, as we uh, move forward, we probably need to be more um, diligent about, to, I guess, um, interim looks. At where we are financially, I know there can't be a long stretch, but we've we've got to intermittently take a look at it, see where we are, take a look at it, see where we are, uh, um, and the deep dive now, prior to final mm -hmm. approval, um, I think we'd have to be creative. But I, I'm comfortable that we all are really in focused on. What we what we're faced with this time around, but um, I, I have a tendency of arguing for the, or not arguing, but rooting for the smaller organizations. Um, I don't know how much we can do on the front end about of this for them, as opposed to maybe them getting lucky to uh, intermittent. You 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 mute you're mute again, Sam. Somehow, if you're back on mute, someone didn't like what you were saying. 
Probably, probably. I, I'm just saying that uh, the smaller groups, um, you know, we we can do what we can for them. Um, and maybe they, they may get lucky doing some of the. Uh, why are you keep, you keep muting, Sam? I don't know why you keep muting. Uh, do you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I'll, you keep muting um, periodically. I have no idea why. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm 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 okay. We just I think the key is um, what we do when we take some of the uh, intermittent reviews of, of where we are financially, and everything else should fall into play. It's not that much we can do about. Um, I guess uh, special special look sees or special set asides right now. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, um, we're willing to do. Uh, just as, as it seems like we're leaning towards uh, deep dive as council. Um, let's just make sure that it, 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 as opposed to us just spitballing an open environment, as much due diligence as we can get from the committee who, who engage with these organizations, get their written packages, get their uh, spoken presentations, you know, the whole nine yards. They can give us some uh, direction. Let's, uh, let's lean on um, our staff and, 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 then, and then we'll have a chance to maybe, maybe uh, uh, really uh, do some uh, some real debate over, over a good document. But I'm, I'm game, I'm game. Okay. So, all right. Um, Mr. Mayor, I moved the previous question. All right, uh, we'll look for the first well, Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vaughn? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye, and, and, and thank you. And, and Missy, um, uh, you, Jeff, Jan, everybody on the budget team, Teresa, um, thank y'all. Uh, we, 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 the, the ability not only to be uh, detailed and thoughtful and um, obviously conservative um, in, in how we budget, but but not kind of giving up on our bigger hopes and dreams. It, it takes a lot of, <laughs> it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of work. And then, and then obviously you, you got, you got your, your, your micromanaging group of seven here um, who, who throw things at you every day. Let's just keep on, keep on responding to the- Every world. day, every hour. I, 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 was, I wasn't talking about you, Daniel. I was saying- <laughs> <laughs> Do yeah. what I can to help. Me, I've been doing this a minute. I'm not commenting on that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, but um, thanks. This is the, this is the people who are listening to us. Right? No, particularly our, our, our organizations that you know um, uh, are really dependent uh, on, on on our partnership, uh, the public's partnership. These are public funds that we we, we control. Um, we, 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 we are listening, we feel your pain, we're going to work through this together. I'm convinced that we can get through this together and our call of counselors too, so we're listening. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor, point of order. Uh, was your motion just to correct the transfer yeah. of the hospitality or was it to adopt uh, no, 2020 both. It both. It was actually both, but I, I don't both. mind. No. I don't I need you to I need you to approve item thirty two and thirty three, Mr. Mayor. I okay. think so. Yeah. But, that, yeah, but that but that but that but as the motion was stated. I know was, that's what your intent was, yes, sir. I move I move approval of item thirty two. Yes. Any discussion? With the previous question, Kirk Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? You gotta mute it. Yes. Mr. Duval. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. That was as amended with the with the motion that <laughs> earlier. Okay. All right. But the motion yeah, to trans transfer the uh, the one point two three five million. Okay. All right. I move approval of item thirty three. Second. In discussion. With the previous question, Kirk Carl Roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. 
Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Mr. Mayor, I also was um, just wanting to make sure, do you all need us to assist in convening all of you or a small group of you to talk through HTAX or are you gonna work on that on your own? I'm perfectly yeah. good with you working on it on your own, but we <laughs> <laughs> now we're doing on our own. Let's let's see if we can do, take those two predicate steps. First of all, getting um, uh, I raised a few issues. I know that, um, that several of us have. Let's see if we can if we can consolidate at least all those different interests in one document. Um, uh, and and, and uh, then um, a, a very specific response to, to Daniel's question about how these proposed. I saw in an earlier document how how. Currently, see that being broken down between line item organizations or frequency funding organizations. And what might go to the committee? Specific response to that. Then, if, you, if whatever whatever engagement we can have, um, and everybody's so crazy right now with with, with, with Terry and, and her committee, I would just find it helpful. <laughs> um, uh, a, a look at um, obviously a preliminary look at what what Missy referenced earlier about uh, some of the carry forwards, and obviously we know that money's there yet, but we know that we will have an opportunity maybe somewhere mid fall uh, to take another look at, at what that looks like and and, and handle H tax uh, then and 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 then us talking again. <laughs> I mean, I, I, and, I, and I think it needs to be this. I think it needs to be uh, all the information and and then all of us talking. Uh, okay, and you would like that before second reading? I think it'd be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all cool with that? Everything that sounds good to y'all? Yes. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, ordinance second reading item 34, ordinance number 2020-024, consenting to the inclusion of property in a multi-county industrial business park at Washington and Assembly, by Washington and Assembly, LLC in Richland County. And at Mayor, I do believe there's been follow-up by staff on the questions regarding parking and the historical designation um, I, I want to say to the council members satisfaction that asked for the information. Okay, good deal. I move approval. Second. 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 Um, any discussion? I'm going to yes. Ms. Duval. Well, uh, I wanted to talk about the parking and then ask Mr. Rickman uh, if, if he's had any success in getting the parking up. It looks to me like they are asking They've got 676 beds in this proposed uh, complex. They only have 405 parking spaces. They got a lot of bike space, 175 bike bicycle spaces. So they're about 169 car spaces short of having a car for everybody that's gonna have a room there. And the way these projects work, you have five people or four people in a room and each one of them's gonna have a car. So where are those 169 cars going to go? Uh, hopefully they won't have cars. And uh, I think <laughs> we're gonna, by, by the time we get done, at the pace we're going, we're going to have autonomous vehicles. Um, the, um, uh, you know, obviously that, that, at least that corner, that part of assembly benefits from the same um, uh, requirements as, as, as downtown. And that we, if you go vertical, you don't have to have parking. There's some here, obviously. Uh, honestly, I, 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 well, we need parking, more parking garages. We have some some great deals in the works. Um, I'm happy with the significant progress here. Um, I'm hoping and praying that if we get things back on track, some of the other nearby development that um, so many have been um, discussing will also help um, uh, mitigate uh, those needs. Uh, but uh, hopefully, some of the conversations we had previous in our previous meeting around around building more multimodal society really starts starts to take 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 hold and uh, become a reality. But uh, it, it's uh, I know those specific uh, questions earlier have been have been addressed, um, but I, I know I know they'll never be addressed to full satisfaction. So I, I, I want to try to do so right now. Um, I, I did have a follow up conversation, and they have reached out and and come up with some options uh, for additional parking, not 160, I think, whatever calculation you had, Howard, there, I can't remember, but it was uh, over 50% 50, 50 um, of that number uh, that 
they had some options to get to add to that if necessary. So that helped me out a lot um, because you can't, there's not going to be based on what the other empire and several of the other uh, student housing um, that I reached out to, um, not all the kids, they had about 75% that had cars. Uh, about, uh, now this is a little further out, I agree, but I do think that having a conversation with those guys yesterday, and I took the time out to, to, to talk with them, and I feel like that they've got a plan if, if, if they need to add more parking even beyond that. Um, and it's, you know, they're just going to pass the cost on. So, I mean, the, the reality is they've reached out some um, different uh, property owners and come up with some options if necessary. It's not one for one, I'll be honest about that. There's not one for one, but I think they did a significant amount of work to come up with some good solutions. And, um, and I know I see, I saw Sam's hand go up. I know uh, we also had a discussion around the uh, historic preservation and uh, the contribution that's been confirmed, Teresa. Uh, yes, sir. I think um, Ryan discussed it with Mr. Davis. Um, to... Ryan, do you want to report out to the full council? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, we, we, we talked with uh, Andrew Savoy uh, of CRG last week, uh, discussed the two outstanding items with them regarding the parking and the historical markers. Um, they've obviously um, kind of committed to doing their part on both. Uh, we're in the process of um, reconnecting uh, Andrew with Robin Waits at Historic Columbia. Um, I think Andrew would like to see maybe some, some um, possible proposals of what different marker scenarios would look like. I know the uh, SC63, some of the, the wayfinding stuff has been recommended as an option as well. Um, they they want to do their part. Uh, they want to contribute to this as well. And so we'll, we'll continue to kind of get that discussion along the way and um, I, I think come up, come up with an option that everybody will be proud of at the end of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, I want them to do their part and, uh, and, uh, um, and uh, but I also be very explicit <laughs> that from the very beginning, uh, their, their part uh, was a, was a significant financial contribution or articulated the document with his work Columbia and Columbia SC 63. Um, the major part of the discussion is, 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 is expansion of the, of the wayfinding signage recognizing significant, uh, uh, portions of, uh, significant historical sites throughout that, that district. And it was a, it was a, it was a, I know five, at least a five figure commitment. And, and that is a condition of this approval. So, um, I want them to do the part, but, but they're going to do their part. So, uh, let's, let's, let's make sure we, we kind of put a, put a bow on that between now, now and uh, our next time we talk about it. All right, previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. Brennan? No. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank, thank, and thanks to um, all of you on both, on, on both or all sides of this and just the due diligence for what's been doing. Um, so thank you very much. Aye. All right. Thank you. Um, next man, city manager. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, real quick. Um, and I, I hate to keep belaboring because I'm always thankful for a uh, approved budget on first reading or and second reading, hopefully. But I see some notes coming in from Mr. Palin regarding you all meeting on H tax before second reading. You you appears that you're approving the amount as adjusted. I don't know that it's, I'm hoping we'll have a productive discussion with you because I just don't know if we're going to have some of the information you need as far as the numbers um, on business license revenue coming in, et cetera. Um, so this idea of carry forwards and that sort of thing, it may be July, honestly, before we would have better numbers to work with. So do you think 
just being real clear right now for the groups and I know that they're wanting to have some information too, but I hate to just sort of have this stringing along and we keep trying to get there without accurate information. But Jeff, I see your note to me. Do you want to speak to that? Is it realistic to think it will have enough information to give council over the next week or so before we would meet again? So on H tax, I, I just want to be clear that when we start talking about the carry forwards, um, as they the, the the various groups have made their requests, so we'll be tallying that all up. But I, I don't think we should leave here thinking that there's all the funds have been collected um, that we'll be able to meet all of those requests for the carry forwards. Exactly. Um, and because we're short, we're, we are short in collections right now, well over 3 million on this year. So we've offset that by 925,000 coming, not going to the general fund to help offset some of that. But then we also don't know until July when we get the June collections in um, really where we're gonna be at. So I, we have to be cautious to know that you know there may not be enough funds for all the carry forward, which may change some of the discussion depending on what the um, priority becomes of the different requests for the carry forward. Um, <clears throat> I, now, I don't think that affects at least the amount that Missy has proposed today in the H tag. Right. Right. Um, on the fact that part of it. So the um, I, off the top of my head, I, I sorry I don't have it right in front of me. The 2.6 million, that part is is a solid number based upon our current projections. So that won't be affected by the carry forward, but the, when we do talk about that and the requests that came in, uh, we'll have to see if we're going to make that. And then, and if we don't, then depending on the priority, what everyone's setting for how they want to spend it, they may want to take a look at the carry forward requests that we can't fund. It's just that we aren't going to know those numbers until after June's over because we don't know what the collections are going to be. In years past, we could always make really good estimates because we can look at prior years. Right now, for the month, of May, from what I saw, at best we collected maybe 30% of what we had budgeted, um, which is to be expected based upon what's going on. It's just that I don't know how robust June is going to be to help make up for some of that as well. And we can certainly continue to try to get the information you all have asked for, and we're, you know, I know you wanted some information from the committee or to. It's your decision, I know, this year, but maybe you have them assist with looking at some things. But it's up to you. I just want you to have all the information you can. No, we can't. Well, we, no, absolutely. We can't make informed decisions if you don't have the information yet. So that so let's 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 continue to um, play that part by by ear and as. But as it shouldn't work. impact you on second reading approving the amount. You know, so which is, you're right. It shouldn't. But but as, as it relates to existing budget and obligations, yeah. the things that we can discuss and talk amongst ourselves to clarify mm -hmm. let's try and, and obviously we know this is an evolving story so we'll get more information when it becomes truly available okay yeah. so I, i'll just sort of play that by ear if we actually do a meeting before your next meeting in june i guess i was just wanting to be clear on that That's fine. okay item 35 is the first resolution on your agenda Resolution number R2020-061, certifying building site as an abandoned building pursuant to the South Carolina Abandoned Buildings Revitalization Act, Title 12, Chapter 67, Section 1267-100 of the South Carolina Code of Laws as amended regarding property located at 1544 Main Street in Columbia, South Carolina in Richland County. I move approval. Is there a second? Second. The discussion. We'll move the brief question for Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Uh, yes. Mr. Rickman? Uh, Mr. McDowell? Ed, you're on mute. Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. Item 36, resolution number R2020062, City of Columbia, South Carolina, support of 
fair, direct federal emergency support to reopen and rebuild local American <laughs> economies. So um, moved. For a second. Any discussion? Question. I mean, that's it, Mr. Mr. Brennan. Is this is, is this National League of Cities? What what is? Can somebody explain this briefly? Yeah, this is um, a resolution that cities are passing to ask for direct allocation of the new stimulus money coming down. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Move the previous question for Colorado. Mr. Vernon. Yes. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vaughn. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank you. Moving into a period of appointments, you all have the Columbia Tree and Appearance Commission. Um, the Airport Commission was added, the Affordable Housing Task Force, and the Central Midlands Regional Transit Authority. And I wanted to add, I, I meant to earlier, Mr. Mayor and Council, that um, I think you can take up a council. I know that Mr. Brennan um, had expressed interest in for the CMRTA. I know your reappointment is before you, but um, I believe the council appointee could be made as well. Uh, I'll be in addition to the existing. I don't even know which. Would yeah, I, I wouldn't. Want, I wouldn't want to knock out the current uh, reappointment, but just for future appointments, I, I would love to uh, have council's consideration. And the timing on that is whatever you whatever you see fit. I'm not sure. I was hoping. Um, I would have clarity for you, Mr. Brennan, on the timing of the council appointee or reappointment. I, I'm not quite sure which one of you are serving right now as that council appoint appointed representative. I don't, I don't think we have a council appointee right now. I think I think, I, I think we okay. I don't think we do. Can we can we can we hold the, the comment appointment if it's if unless there's some sense of urgency coming from the comment, do a quick dive. Uh, I'm gonna be sure. Uh, who, who's back up now, Mr. Huggins? Derek, Derek yeah. Huggins. I'd like, I'd like to return Derek. Um, yeah. That's the only thing that's before you, Mayor. I was just asking about the council appointing because Mr. Brennan and I had talked about that. Can we get some clarity, though, on um, sure. uh, on the council appointee? I mean, I think it's important if you got somebody uh, who, who wants too. to have someone, uh, 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 you know, there. So. I uh, mean, one of our, our, our one of our colleagues. Um, but I think I mean Derek's been invaluable. I mean, we we wouldn't have saved we wouldn't save the dog on dog on CMRTA years ago without Derek's leadership. So I want to recognize that. Um, uh, but I'd love to dig a little deeper and see if we can find out there's a, a opportunity to. Because I know there's also been some discussion around restructuring the board and what that can mean um, for um, uh, an additional seat. We need a council seat too. That's one way of saying that. And, and if we can get that negotiated, we we, we get Mr. Brennan in there. Uh, but again, Appreciate I'm, that, Mayor. Yeah, I'm with the reappointment of Mr. Huggins. Just Second. Discussion with the question, Kirk Colorado. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickerman. You know, you're on mute, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rick, the thumbs up. Mr. I'm not sure. <laughs> Put that in the record. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Oh, Vaughn. Yes. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Aye. Thank you. At the Columbia Tree and Appearance Commission, Mr. Mayor. Who, who do we have up? Uh, I apologize. I've seen Ashley's report. Who do we have? Um, Bye, Henley. Bye. And she wants. And she wants to continue to serve. Uh, no, she wants. She would be a new appointment. New, a new appointee. Okay. That was awesome. Is that a motion? Uh, uh, I move the appointment. Is there a second? Second. second. All right. Any discussion? Previous... I'm sorry. She, does she fill an out of city seat? She doesn't live in the city. Yeah, she's not. I, right, I, I just was a district too. 
<laughs> she's pretty close. She, she, she's a, she's a, close, a, but she ain't she's in the district. Three, she's a three iron, if nothing else. Um, is, there, is there a residency requirement <laughs> for the board? I don't know. I just was asking what, what, what okay, yeah. spot she was filling. There yeah, is no sure. residency requirement. A residency requirement. And we got other folks who, who don't live in the city. Um, so we got to make sure, obviously, it's modified. If, if, if I, we do know by an unincorporated area of the county, but probably be most active non city resident in all city things. Uh, <laughs> maybe at least one of the top three in the city and a, and a, and a treasure. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm fine with the, with the, with, with the appointment. Let's make sure the record does reflect that it's, it's not district um, uh, two or, or, or three for the out of city. Okay. Uh, um, with the previous question. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Yes. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Mr. Duvall, I think we have the uh, airport commission. Has that been confirmed? Uh, it, uh, Carol Fowler uh, is up for reappointment. She has finished her first term on that and about six months ago, she um, asked for reappointment and we had it on the agenda and didn't take care of it that night. And then we got COVID. That I'd is, like to hold this for discussion on a later date. Okay. I mean, uh, well, Kim, oh, well, uh, I, it, wasn't I, on our, it wasn't on our agenda. I haven't had an opportunity. Um, so I'd like to hold if possible. I'm not disagreeing with you, Dan. Uh, no, my, my case. <laughs> um, let's move it to the next agenda properly noticed. Um, uh, if, if there's some, some issues we need to discuss, I support Ms. Uh, Ms. Fowler's uh, reappointment. Um, but y'all, y'all, y'all figure that out, work it out, and we get it on the next agenda properly. Um, uh, noticed. And also, Erica, do a deep dive, make sure we make sure we hadn't already taken it up. So, oh, too, but if we haven't, let's make sure we address it. Okay. Thank you. We looked at it and her term didn't expire until February oh, and it was on the March 17th agenda and it was, it was scheduled to be on March 17th, but it wasn't heard. So I think we're we're in the clear on that. Well, proper, well let's properly notice it and, and then uh, we can, we can um, take it up. I shouldn't have questioned Howard. I apologize, Councilman Duvall. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. All right. Um, well, we'll so we're so we're saying that we will take this up at our next meeting. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Um, any? Uh, I think that's all. All the stated agenda. Do we have any? Affordable housing. Affordable housing. Oh, I can tell is, is that Mr. Vine or who's going to move that on? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, we, uh, the mayor mentioned in the state of the city that we were going to uh, re-up our affordable housing task force. And I asked him if I could um, handle this and he said yes. So I've worked with um, staff to try and pull together a, a great task force. Um, we are, have our first meeting tomorrow. I mean, excuse me, next Tuesday. So I'd like council uh, to appoint uh, the following members. I'm sorry, I should have had this in front of me, Erica. I got it. Okay. I've got, got um, Lala Anna Sauls uh, representing Homeless No More, Reggie Bonner from the Bonner Group, who is an affordable housing developer, John Ando from the Comet, Sue Berkowitz, Executive Director of South, South Carolina Appleseed Legal Justice, Lester Young from Just, Just Leadership, Jennifer Moore from the United Way, Julianne Avon, Executive Director of Mercy, Jim Zeke, who is uh, the representative for More Justice. Uh, Brianna, uh, Brenna Albritton, who uh, has worked with homeless veterans with Fast Forward, uh, Jeff Armstrong from Family Promise, and Jeff Latta Laramore from Midlands Housing Trust uh, Fund. Uh, these are the members who have been asked and have um, have agreed to serve if appointed. And I know that Mr. Rickman mentioned adding a div, uh, affordable housing builder. Um, I think Reggie Bonner fills that. However, if council members have any additional suggestions. I don't want the committee to be too big, but if you have any additional suggestions, we're open to that. But I wanted to go ahead, since this is our last meeting before the task force is scheduled to have our first meeting, I wanted to go ahead and get this appointment. And then if we have any additional ones, we can appoint those later. So I would so move the appointment of those people. 
Is there a second? Second. All right, Mr. Uh, Drickin. Yeah, you you can go ahead and carry that through. I'll wait. Right, Daniel. I, I don't have I don't have a suggestion now. I just I, I will may have some folks too. I know Tamiki, you want to kind of keep it not too big so that it can be working, but there's a lot of <coughs> nonprofits in there, and to make this successful, we got to have some people who understand how to leverage dollars and do things in the private sector. So if there's one other spot that maybe we could fill, I don't know, Will, I know you run across a lot of these people more than I do, but I just, I think it'd be helpful for your group so they can maximize, because this is very important to the community. Oh yeah, no, definitely. I this I just don't have, only person I thought of addition in addition to Mr. Bonner was Kevin Conley and I didn't get a response back from him, but no, I would welcome some an, a suggestion so Daniel or Will if you do have one um and if you have one you know within the next day or two let me know so that absolutely I will I think it's a it's a wonderful yeah. list you have there Tamika um and I would say my only suggestion is somebody add somebody that has knowledge of historic tax credits uh, abandoned building tax credits kind of that that adaptive reuse approach that, that, that we can plug in for for housing solutions uh we have a lot of wonderful um legal uh, folks in the area that, that might be a good part of the, part of your team for that. And I can, I can give you some suggestions. Yes, please do. To me, I'd, I like, great. I'd like to do the same thing if you don't mind. Sure. Yes. We don't want it to be too big, but of course, uh, I got one or two persons who have shown some interest in this kind of, this kind of uh, experience. Now, I, I, and let me just say, I said, I don't want it to be too big, but I, I don't mean, I don't want to exclude anybody. I mean, this, all the things that we do are important, but this is such an important issue. What we do know is that the more people we have involved, the more uh, voices and partners we have to, to move our agenda forward to actually, you know, getting the community involved in the solution. So I, I welcome suggestions. These were just some folks that I know we've worked with in the past and have a particular expertise, but if you guys can give me some names we're scheduled to meet uh, next next Tuesday at 11. So if they you get them to me and they can be part of that meeting, that'd be great. If not, I can meet with them after that meeting and then get them looped in after next week. Great, appreciate you taking it on. Davis? Well, yeah. no, I, I, I can with them next week. If not, uh, Ed can carry my water for me with his appoint, appointee. <laughs> thank you, thank but you. I, I may Dave. give you one, Tamika, I may. Okay. All right. We have have we voted on this yet? I'm sorry. No, no. no. With a brief question. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Yes. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Yes. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, um, uh, citizen, any public participation you want to sign up to speak, Erica? Not at this time, nothing. Good. Thank you, Madam Clerk. All welcome. right. Uh, all right, um, Madam City Manager, we have we have any other items to, to add uh, for executive section discussion, discussion? No, sir. All right, Mr. Duval, you give me the pleasure. Mr. Mayor, I move we go into executive session for receipt of legal advice related to matters covered by attorney-client privilege pursuant to SC Code 30-4-70A2, legal advice pertaining to COVID-19, discussion of the employment of an employee pursuant to 30-4-70A1, municipal court. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right. Um, with the previous question, Clark Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Yes. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vaughn? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Um, so while my face is on the screen, uh, but I'm in the room, just want to ask counsel for, um, obviously on the state law, uh, the city ordinance gives the mayor the authority to, uh, to call a curfew and council has to ratify it. So for yesterday's declaration of June 1st at 745, we need to make sure we ratify that decision. There no, there's no 
um, uh, effort uh, tonight to impose a curfew. Uh, and, and obviously, we'll, we'll always, uh, with the advice and counsel of, of the chief uh, and city manager, uh, exercise the authority that I have under state law and the ordinance. But we need to at least ratify last night's action. Is there a motion? I move we ratify the mayor's action of calling a curfew last night. Second. Uh, Move by Mr. Uh, Duval, second by Mr. Rickman. Uh, any discussion? Uh, move the previous question, Clerk Calderon. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Uh, Mr. McDowell? You muted, you muted, Ed. You muted, Ed. Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Do we have a, a, a non-debatable motion to adjourn? Mayor, before you adjourn, you might want to say that the 11 p.m. curfew is still in place. It's it still it's still it's still in effect and is is set to expire on on June the ninth, uh, and 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 obviously we'll continue to monitor both the safety and public health concerns between now and then. And if council uh, feels the need to meet again, we'll consider we'll consider that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. A second. Uh, move the previous question, Clerk Calderon. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Hang on a minute, James. Aye. Y'all have a good evening.